Right, welcome to my first video on exponent rules. This is going to be the basic exponent rule video. <clears throat> I'll follow it up with a with a video that's a little bit more advanced. So what we're going to look at here are a ton of our different rules uh, that we can basically utilize to solve any any problem that involves exponents. And you can use this, you know, throughout all of your algebra courses. Uh, Pre-calc, trig, all sorts of courses, uh, and into college because these rules never change; they're always the same. So if you kind of know these basic rules, you're going to get through a lot of your uh, math problems. So here we go. We're going to start off with uh, th the rule where we have the same base x times x raised to exponents. So x to the fifth times x to the eighth. All right. The rule here is pretty simple. You keep the base and you add the exponents. Even though you're multiplying the actual terms, you add the exponents. And the reason why, which I'll go through some derivation here with you, the reason why is because x to the fifth is actually x times x times x times x times x. And x to the eighth is eight of these. So we've got five of them here and eight of them here. <clears throat> and that, of course, is 13 of them. So that's how that works. You just very simply just add the exponents together. All right, let's move on. <clears throat> I'm not going to derive all of them, but I'll show you some of the derivations. The second one is a division. So we have 10 of these x's in the top. You can imagine them. All right, maybe I'll write them quickly. Three, four, five. 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, divided by 4 of them. So 1, 2, 3, and 4. All right, the rule here is that we're just going to take the base, keep it, and subtract the exponents. Here's how we get that. We have x on top, x on bottom. They cancel, they cancel, they cancel, they cancel. Four of them cancel out, leaving you with six of them, which is where we get x to the sixth. So for the first one we add, the second one we subtract. So this is a multiplication problem. We add the exponents. This is a division problem. We subtract the exponents. When you have a power to a power in parentheses like this, the rule is that you multiply two numbers together, x to the 18. All right, and again, quick derivation. What this really means is we have x to the sixth multiplied by itself three times. So it's x to the sixth, x to the sixth, x to the sixth. Six plus six plus six is 18. All right, so there we multiplied when we have power to a power. All right, moving on. Negative exponents. Negative exponents are kind of weird. What they do is they take the term that they're attached to and they basically put it into the denominator of a fraction. So this one will be 1 over x squared. All right, negative exponents just kind of like move to the bottom. Or if they're already in the bottom, like if it were this to start with, it would move up to the top, become positive. Or you always want to turn negative exponents into positive exponents in math. And to do that, you just simply need to move them from where they are. This is kind of like starting over one and flip it over. Anything to the power of zero is even stranger. That's equal to one. You know, so it's like seven to the zero. That's just one. You know, pi to the zero. That's just one. Anything to the zero is one. You could have something really con complicated that is equal to one. That was easy to remember. X to the two thirds. This is a fraction as an exponent, right, and this rule is going to turn into a root. So it's going to be the third root of x squared. Now how did I do that? Well, the denominator turns into what I call my index. It tells me what kind of root, and the numerator goes up here. That turns into my exponent. 
So this would be the cube root of x squared. If you had x to the 1 half, that would be the square root of x to the first, which we more commonly write just as that. All right, let's move on. <clears throat> Here we have something a bit more complicated. We have powers to a power. When we have this, the exponent out here gets multiplied. Remember, that was one of the rules we learned above. Multiplied, and it also gets distributed into here and down here as well. So what this is going to look like is 4. There's an exponent of 1 on 4. 1 times 5 is 4 to the 5th x to the 15th divided by x to the negative 50. And from here you can simplify again. Never want to leave negative exponents. So let's write 4 to the 5th, x to the 15th, and x to the positive 50. Because this is a negative exponent, it moves up to the top and becomes positive. So here we have x to the 15th plus x to the 50, which is x to the 65. Remember, we just add those two together. So 4 to the 5th times x to the 65 would be your final answer. If you wanted to simplify 4 to the 5th power, you certainly can, but it's a really big number. So those are the basics. If you can sort of work with all of those and be able to combine them into more complicated problems, you should be fine. So let's practice a little bit. <clears throat> x to the fifth times x to the second is x to the seventh. Add those exponents. x squared times uh, a raise to the third power is x to the sixth. Multiply those exponents. a to the sixth over a to the fourth is a squared. We subtract those exponents. Here we have 3 times 4 is 12. We'll multiply those constants together times v to the eighth. We'll add those exponents together. All right, here we have a negative. So we're going to distribute that inside. So we get 3 to the negative 2 times x to the negative 10. So that turns into 1 over 3 squared times x to the tenth, which is 1 over 9 x to the 10th. Number six. All right, a couple different ways to do some of these problems. I'll show you two ways here. First thing I'm going to show you is that the negative exponent term goes down to the bottom and becomes positive. So 1 over x to the 11th. Or you can also do it this way. You can just do the old fashioned negative 4 minus 7. Since we're dividing these terms, they have the same base, you can subtract. So it would be x to the negative 11. Can't leave negative 11, so it would be x over positive, or 1 over x uh, to the positive 11. Number 7. <clears throat> Let's rewrite this fraction, or this uh, term, as a radical expression. So it's the square root. There's a little index there of 2. We never really write that. That's kind of our default index. Uh, the square root of a to the third is your answer. And that actually simplifies again. I'll get, I'll get into this a little bit more in my more advanced video, but uh, this turns into <clears throat> the square root of a squared times a to the first. I just kind of split a to the third up into those two terms. And then I can split it up into two separate terms. So the square root of a squared is a times the square root of a. Right, this thing right here simplifies down into just a. The square root of anything squared is just that thing. But we'll come back to that in, in the more advanced video. Number eight. Again, this looks a little bit more challenging, but it's a power to a power. So we, all we do is we multiply them together. So we get the base, n. Multiply these two fractions. 1 over 5 times 2 over 3 is 2 over 15. So that's the 15th root of n squared. And you're done. Number 9. All right, so let's take a look at the numbers first. 
4 over 24 is just 1 over 6, nothing new there. And these other terms here both have the same base, so we can work with them. So that would be, again, two ways to do this. Let's take the negative term up, so we get p to the eighth, and take the negative term and move it down, so we get p to the third. So that's p to the fifth, 8 minus 3, over 6. The other way to do that, let me erase this, would be to do 1 over 6, and then just subtract these two exponents. Negative 3 minus negative 8 is positive 5. So that's where we get p to the fifth. Number 10. Power to a power, we're going to take this thing and we're going to distribute it inside. So I get v to the negative 21 over, well, v to the 0 is just 1. So that's just going to change. That's just going to stay there. I'm, I'm actually just going to sort of mentally get rid of that. I don't even need to do this distribution, distribution right there. But I do need to do v to the negative 15th. So when they're both negative, just switch both of them. So I have v to the 15th over v to the 21st. All I did was I basically just, just sort of flip-flopped the positions. So I get 1 over v to the 6th. 15 minus 21. <clears throat> At this level, if you wanted to simply just subtract these exponents, you can. Negative 21 minus negative 15 is negative 6. So it would be v to the negative 6th, which is 1 over v to the 6th. Let's do one more. Okay. This one, which looks pretty easy, but a lot of students mi uh, kind of mix this one up. Don't do this. I'll put it in red. This is not the answer. That is not the answer right there. All right, the reason it doesn't work that way is because this negative 11 is only attached to the x. It's not attached to the 8. The 8 has its own exponent of positive 1. So that 8 stays where it is, and the negative 11 exponent moves to the bottom and becomes positive. So there you go. Some quick examples there, those are the basics. In the next video we're going to sort of work from these basic examples and move into some more advanced ones. So look forward to that, but uh, like I said, these, you know, if you can kind of master these, a lot of these basic rules, you're going to be, you're going to do really well in a lot of uh, upper level algebra problems. So thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one.